So for this week, we're talking about strategic thinking. I'm going to use uh, something called game theory, which no doubt you've read about now in your textbook. First, let's just go over some terms that are commonly used in game theory, in case they come up. Strategies. These are the possible actions that a player can take in a game. Payoffs are the possible outcomes of a player's strategy. Uh, relative to another player's strategy. A one-shot game is a game where there is only one round. You play it once. A two-shot game is obviously where there's two rounds, where you play once and then you repeat. Or a multi-shot game in which you, or a repeated game in which you play the game over and over and over and over again. A dominant strategy is the single best strategy for a player, irrespective of what the other player or players do. And a Nash equilibrium is where no player has an incentive to change their strategy from the one they selected, given what the other player or players are choosing to do. So this seems a little bit abstract. So let's, let's try and think of it in terms of a real game. I'm going to try and uh, hit a few tennis balls. I haven't played tennis for yonks for about half a year now. So I'm uh, going to try and get my eye back in. Hopefully I'll get some results. Fingers crossed. Let's think of it in terms of tennis. Now, in tennis, we're going to say we've got two players. So we've got it uh, at one end. We've got uh, we got Fred, and at the other end, we've got Ed. And now the players have strategies. The two strategies that Ed has at his disposal are playing a forehand and playing a backhand. Fred, obviously same story. He has a strategy, he could play a forehand or play a backhand. So these are the strategies. Okay, now obviously you can think of different combinations of strategies. So the two players could play forehand and forehand to each other. Now if they did that, let's say, just for fun, that their forehands are equally matched. So if they have a forehand to forehand rally, let's say there's a 50% chance that Ed would win and a 50% chance that Fred would win. Okay? Uh, they might have a backhand to backhand rally. In that case, let's say, we just, we're just making up numbers here. Let's say my backhand is a little bit better than Fred's backhand. So uh, I'd have a 60% chance of winning that and Fred would have a 40% chance of winning a backhand to backhand rally. 
And then there's backhand to forehand. And forehand to backhand. Like this. And they are all the possible combinations and they'll all have different kinds of uh, payoffs. Okay? So it might be that, I don't know, this is 40% um, Ed, 60% uh, Fred. This might be, I don't know, 60% Ed, 40% Fred. Let's say. All right, so we now know we've got the two players. We've got the strategies that each one of them can engage in. And we've got all the different combinations of those strategies and the, these are the payoffs. Okay, all these ones here, payoffs. Okay, so what we could do is you could represent um, a, a game of tennis rather than by a diagram, we could represent it in a matrix or a payoff matrix which shows all the different combinations of strategies and the payoffs that go with them. So for example, let's imagine a situation where now I'm just going to draw hand, draw freehand a payoff matrix here. So I'm going to put me here, Fred here. So I've got two strategies. I can play a forehand and a backhand. Fred can play a forehand and a backhand. So now all we need to do is to put in the payoffs of all the combinations. Uh, so let's say that uh, my forehand is not as good as Fred's forehand. So if we were to play a forehand to forehand rally, there's a 40% chance that I'd win and a 60% chance that he'd win. Okay? And let's say our backhands are as good as each other. So if we played a backhand to backhand rally, let's say there'd be a 50% chance I'd win and a 50% chance he'd win. But if we played a backhand to forehand rally, where I play backhands, he plays forehands, my backhand might not be as good as his forehand. So there'd be only a 20% chance I'd win and there'd be an 80% chance he'd win. On the other hand, if I was playing forehand and he was playing backhand, then there's, let's say, an 80% chance I'd win and a 20% chance he'd win. So these are all the different combinations. Now, let's think of it from my perspective. First, I think to myself, if Fred plays forehands, if he tries to play forehands all the time, what should I do? Should I play four hands in response and have a 40% chance of winning? Or should I play back hands in response, in which case there's only a 20% chance of winning? I'm gonna play four hands. Then I think to myself, what if on the other hand, Fred starts playing back hands? Should I play four hands, in which case there's an 80% chance of me winning? Or should I play back hands too? in which there's a 50% chance of winning. 80% chance better than 50%, so I'm gonna play four hands. Okay, now what, I re now what do we realize? I'm always gonna play forehand. This is a dominant strategy on my part. To, I'm gonna always play four hands. It doesn't matter what Fred chooses to do, I'm always gonna play four hands. Now, if Fred has figured that out, then all he has to worry about is saying, all right, Ed's always gonna play four hands, so what should I do? Should I play four hands, in which case I, there's a 60% chance of winning, or should I play back hands, in which I'd have a 20% chance of winning? I'm gonna play four hands. So Fred will choose four hands as well. 
So I'll always play forehand, and he's going to choose to play forehand. So we end up in here. This will be our equilibrium outcome. Okay. This is the equilibrium. In fact, it's a Nash equilibrium because if I'm playing forehands, I now have no incentive to start playing backhands. It will always be a worse option for me. Okay? And it's the same for Fred. Okay? So in that case, we have this Nash equilibrium. Given what the other has chosen, neither player will have any incentive to change their strategy. Incidentally, just as a fun side note, we can then, based on this information, this is not really directly related to game theory, but uh, it enables us to see what's the uh, likely outcome of this game going to be before it's even started. Since we know that this is the kind of shot play which is going to occur in the game, forehand to forehand, throughout, and we know that in that case, Fred has a 60% chance of winning each point, then over the course of the game, Fred is probably going to win the game. So you'd bet your money on Fred. Okay, that was fun. Let's do another one. Uh, so we're still playing tennis. And we'll drop our payoff matrix. And it's still, uh, still Fred and Ed. And, um... So we've got four hands and back hands, nothing's changed there, everyone still has their hands, so that's nice. Uh, let's say, in this case, if it were forehand to forehand, let's say uh, my forehand is stronger than Fred's. So there's a 60% chance I'd win, 40% chance he'd win. And if we were playing backhand to backhand, uh, let's say his backhand is stronger. So, there's a 40% chance I'd win and a 60% chance he'd win. Okay, so far so good, looks kind of symmetrical. What about if it were forehand, his forehand to my backhand? Uh, all right, so let's say there's a 50% chance, it's a 50-50 chance either one of us win. And equally, let's say Forehand to his backhand. I've got a strong forehand. He's got a strong backhand. So let's say it's 50-50 Chance in that case. All right, so what would happen now? Well, let's think of ourselves from my perspective Now I think to myself if Fred plays four hands, what should I play? Should I play a forehand? 60% chance of winning or a backhand 50% chance of winning. I'm gonna go for forehand what if Fred plays backhands? Should I go for forehand, 50% chance of winning, or backhand, 40% chance of winning? I'm gonna go for forehand. Again, we see that my dominant strategy is to play forehand. What now, if Fred knows that, Fred can figure that out, he's not a moron. So uh, he's, you know, he's studied up. He's watched all the videotapes of me playing Wimbledon. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. so Fred thinks to himself, all right, so Ed's going to play four hands every time. Should I play four hands, 40% chance of winning, or should I play backhands, 50% chance of winning? I don't play backhand. Okay, so where do we end up? We end up in this quadrant here. So, we'll have forehand to backhand rallies uh, throughout the game. Now, and uh, if we wanted to bet on this game, who would we bet on? Well, now it's going to be, it's even Stevens. It's a 50% chance of me winning, 50% chance of Fred winning. So we would say over the course of a match, it would come down to, uh, to tiebreakers. Now, when it comes down to tiebreakers, you never really know what's going to happen at the end of that. 
okay? So it could go either way. 